In topic two, we want to discuss class midpoints and frequency polygons. Now class midpoints, I'm just going to give you a little warning. These are very useful and important for section 3.3. So you will see these again, I promise you. 3.3 um, among other sections. So class midpoints are a big deal, or moderately big deal. And frequency polygons, it's a fancy way of saying basically line graphs, right? So if you think of, if you've heard of line graphs from school, that's kind of what we're talking about. It's, it's a little bit more fancy than that. It's a little bit more restricted, but that's kind of what we're talking about. And of course, it's a frequency line graph, right? So you can think of it as a frequency line graph, right? Okay, so let's look at class midpoint. Class midpoint money funnily enough because it's the midpoint is the number in the middle of the class now remember classes are the groups right so class means um group or bin right those right from a table now if a distribution has consistent class width you can use it to find the midpoints ah. but often distributions have inconsistent widths. For example, age, right? So age is not always consistent. Right, age distributions are frequently not consistent because we have different reasons for lumping children together than teenagers and so on, and those widths are not the same. Usually when we have those, they'll be inconsistent for a while and then they'll gain consistent width later on. And you can use that consistent width later on in order to find open-ended class limits. So for example, if the class width towards the end of the table is 10, then you'll use that to find the class midpoint for an open-ended class. Now, let's look and see what I mean right down here. <laughs> so before I even talk about frequency polygons, let's, let's look at this. So this is the same class that we've looked at before, um, same classes we've looked at before for exam grades. Remember, these were the final exam data from a whole bunch of classes, right? Now the midpoints are the mean of consecutive lower class limits. Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, mean is something you'll learn in section 3.1, but basically it means you're gonna add them up and you're gonna divide by two. So let me write it down. You take a lower class limit, I'm gonna put this in parentheses because that's the big mistake students make, and then it will add to it the next lower class limit. That's what it means by consecutive, right? One right after the other. Close your parentheses. So you add the lower class limit plus the next lower class limit. That's next. You add them up and you divide by two. Right? That's the formula. Right there. Okay. All right. So let's look down below them. If I'm going to take the lower class limit plus the next to lower class limit. So let me start with, oh, it doesn't really matter where I start. I'll start with 40 right here. So if I take 40 and I add to it 50, put in parentheses, divide by two, right? That should get me a number that is the midpoint for this class. And you don't generally have to show the calculation. You wanna do it in your notes, of course, because you wanna know how you did it, <laughs> but you don't have to. Now, on a calculator, there's two ways we can do this. So I can click parentheses, parentheses 40 plus 50, close my parentheses, divide by two, enter. 45. And now if you're on a TI-84 calculator, you actually have a, a function on the calculator that allows you to make fractions look like fractions. Sorry, I was unhappy with my 50, but now I made things worse. <laughs> there we go. All right, so do you see the green F1 that's above the Y equals button? So if I hit the green key, which is the alpha key, and then I hit Y equals, the F stands for function. And you can see those top five buttons have F1, F2, F3. They're just like a computer. Um, they're function keys, function one, function two, and so on. So if, if I hit F1, it automatically brings up the fraction menu. And you can see number one is N divided by D, which is numerator divided by denominator. In other words, if I click number one, it makes it a fraction. See? Let me do that again. So alpha 
y equals. So the green button and then y equals and then choose number one and it looks like a fraction. And so I can type 40 plus 50. I don't need parentheses. It'll take care of it for me. And then I hit the down arrow to kind of work my way to the down to the denominator and I hit two and then I press enter and there it goes. Right. So one way or another I know that this class's midpoint is 45. Now I can do that again for the next one. So this next one would be 50 and then the next lower class limit is 60. 50 plus 60 divided by 2 is 55. Right? I can prove it. Alpha y equals number 1. 50 plus 60 divided by 2. Enter. 55. So if you want to write that you can but you don't need to because there's another way to do this. If you look here on the left hand side you can see and we've already looked at this problem, that there's a consistent class width. It's pretty obvious because it's 0, 0, 0, 0, right? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So you'll note there's a consistent class width for this problem. Which we already learned how to find, it's 10. So what's another way I could find this 55? Well, if the class width is consistent, then I can say 45 plus 10 makes 55. 55 plus 10, there's a 10 there, would get me 65. 65 plus 10 makes 75. 75 plus 10 makes 85, right? And then if you see this, it's saying for open-ended classes, you can use that class width. As long as it's consistent, you can use it. If it's not consistent, usually what's happening is it's consistent on half of it and then consistent on the other half, and you can kind of fake your way into it. So, but this one absolutely is consistent. It's 10 all the way through. So that means that I can find this number right here, even though it's just below 39, I can use that 10 and think, hmm, what number plus 10 would have been 45? well, that would have been 35, right? So I can figure this out. That's So that way, add 10, add 10, add 10. And then if I add 10 at the end, I've got 95. These numbers are the class midpoints. Very useful, very important, especially for section 3.3. .3. All right, now what's a frequency polygon? A frequency polygon is a line graph that uses those midpoints, right? So those class midpoints are on the horizontal axis and the frequencies, or technically you could do it with relative frequency and then it becomes a relative frequency polygon. Um, you can also do it with percents, but percents are just a form of relative frequency. All right, so, and then the weird thing is, well, let's look here. 35, so C35 is right here, has a height of, right, should be two. Oh, rats, I just realized I have the wrong frequencies. Remember, this was from an earlier problem. It should be 5, 8, 16, and so on. And I did not have that in that table. I'm going to have to fix these for future. So sorry about that typo. I will erase these and put in the correct numbers. <laughs> and I will make sure that it's correct for future, for future semesters. So let me make this 5, 8, 16, 25, 32, 45. And that's what I used to make this graph. I just forgot to apparently fix the table. There we go. Okay, so that first frequency, 35 is at 5, 45 is at 8, 55 is at 16. See it right there? All right, so wonderful. There's all the numbers. The last class is right here. So the first class is right here. And the last class is right here. Now I know there's other numbers in there. I'm getting to that. But which kind of distribution am I drawing here? Well, it's a frequency distribution, so it's a frequency polygon because it has frequency over here on the side. So this is a frequency polygon. Right? Now, the fake classes. Now, let's read that again. So there should be a fake starting class and an ending class that have frequency zero. What's going on there? Well, if we look at the table, what's happening is if I think 35, 45, and so on, what would be the class above that? It? It'd be 25 and have a zero, and it'd be 105 and have a zero. So those that's the fake, and that's a fake. 
but a polygon always has this kind of fake starting class right here. So that's the fake starting class. And then that's the fake ending class because they like it to go back to the X axis. So those are the two fake classes. You have one at the start and you have one at the end. They're not really part of the table. So on a frequency polygon, they always start at zero and end at zero, but they weren't real data. The data is from this number right here to that one right there, right? Now, one last question is, what is the shape of this distribution? Well, it has a tail over here to the left. So that would be skewed left. or negatively skewed, right? Because it has a tail over there on the left side. Okay, so it's a line graph, but it's a little fancier. And what makes it fancy is this fake start and fake end. And the fact that we're using midpoints, right? So these are exam grades, yes, but these are midpoints here. So all of those values are the midpoint values. Oops, let me put that away. So this number, this number, those are the midpoints. We wouldn't generally bother saying that. I'm writing it here for our own benefit. But we use the midpoints as part of the graph. This is the start, this is the end, and these are the fake classes at zero, right? So the Y values are zero. So you kind of ignore them, but you have to draw them if you are in fact making a frequency polygon.